to continue to document that zero gravity is unhealthy. And we don't need to continue to um, avoid addressing it. Now you can say, okay, we have this space station and we want to operate it, and so there's going to be more exposure to zero G. Well, fine, maybe. But when you have this situation, I think it becomes a moral imperative to move as quickly as you can to transition out of it, to transition out of a situation where every person that you ask to do long duration space flight is going to be exposed to these unhealthy conditions. I, I, I just don't see it. The, now there's other issues here, which has to do with um, the fact that the space program isn't going anywhere. I, I alluded to this briefly um, in the Vasimir panel earlier today on the other subject, which is, uh, the, you know, there's two main subjects of, of, of health effects in space, which is one is the zero gravity and the other is radiation. Okay. Um, it is claimed that the reason why we cannot currently contemplate sending humans to Mars with present day propulsion is because the radiation health effects are um, too detrimental. And so we must have radically faster propulsion systems. Uh, and until that time, we can't do it. So in the meantime, we'll just keep operating in low Earth orbit. Now, radiation health effects that are experienced in long duration um, space flight are uh, n not what is called in the health physics business prompt doses. The, 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 as I used to do nuclear safety, and there's two kinds of radiation doses you can get. You can get a big dose quickly, okay, and that's much more dangerous. Um, if you get the same dose scattered over an extended period of time, uh, the body's, uh, like years, uh, the body's repair mechanisms has a chance to uh, repair things that are damaged. And so, uh, you know, it's like um, if you drank one martini a day, you can do that for years and the health effects would be modest. If you drank a thousand martinis in one day, <laughs> okay, um, you're dead, okay? Uh, because you know, the, if you drink them one a day, the liver can get rid of the alcohol and, and you're set up and, and fine. And there might be some effects, but, but it, it's not a, fit, a necessarily fatal thing. Um, it's statistical. That, that sort of thing might create a statistical threat to your health. Similarly, cigarettes, okay? Somebody, cigarettes cause cancer, but if you smoke a cigarette, you don't expect, okay, you just smoke the cigarette, four, three, one, okay. The, uh, it, it just statistically increases your chance. So the kind of radiation doses that would be expected on human spaceflight, except for a solar flare exposure. Okay, solar flare exposure can be a prompt dose of uh, hundreds or thousands of REMs within hours, and that's prompt. But you can shield against them. The real issue is the galactic cosmic rays, uh, which you can't shield against. Uh, those are delivered over months and years, and they statistically increase the chance of getting cancer. And they, they use um, the methodology used, because you, do, you cannot associate a direct exposure directly a cause and an effect, okay? You're dealing with populations here and probabilities. Uh, and is, uh, for a 35-year-old woman, uh, 60 REMS would represent about a 1% chance of getting a cancer sometime later in her life. Uh, for a 35-year-old male, it would require about 80 REMS to represent the same degree of threat. And this, by the way, is roughly the degree of, of a range of radiation dose that one could expect on a round-trip Mars mission with chemical propulsion, six-month transits. Uh, it's in this sort of 1% range. Um, older people are less vulnerable. Younger people are more vulnerable. Women are a little more vulnerable than men because they have the additional risk of the breast cancer. Uh, but otherwise, it's all pretty similar. Um, okay. So... What this means is using the linear hypothesis where 
so many person REMs add up to a probabilistic uh, fatal cancer, okay, and it's about 6,000 REMs, uh, makes, you know, six, 60 would be 1%, 600 would be 10%, 6,000 would be 100%, okay, person REMs. So, for instance, if you had 100 people and they each got 60 REMs, you would think that one of them would get cancer, okay? Uh, it, it is the most probable case. Uh, could be two, could be none, but one would be a, a probable incidence. If you had um, uh, 200 people and they each got 30 REMS, you would also expect one cancer for the same reason. Now the space station program, okay, the space station experiences cosmic ray doses at half the rate that we would get in interplanetary space. Okay, but the space station is continually manned with a crew about equal to that which we would have on a manned mission. So we get 10 crew years at space station rates of cosmic ray radiation is equivalent to five crew years at interplanetary rates. And if we had an active Mars mission program where we were going to Mars at every opportunity, say in this present decade, we would be inflicting the same number of person REMs as we're going to inflict on the crews of the space station, okay? Except that they won't be going to Mars. So what I'm getting at here, and in addition, of course, they're going to get the zero gravity exposure and the health effects that that implies as well. So that what you have is, if your concern is minimizing the number of people who get cancer as a result of attempting human Mars exploration, you actually want to get right to it. Um, and rather than have a, a decade of space station activity in which you're racking up exactly the same number of person REMs and probabilistic cancers as you would as if you were actively exploring Mars. But then in addition to these, you'll get the other dose that you get when you do explore Mars. Okay, so to me, this idea of uh, prolonged exposure to zero gravity, prolonged exposure of people to cosmic rays without actually attempting the mission, um, that there's ethical questions here. That far from taking the ethical high ground of saying we're getting more and more data, this is going to make the Mars mission safer, you're inflicting the same degree of hazard with respect to radiation and a greater degree of hazard with respect to zero gravity than you would if you actually went and did the mission, okay? So, um, to me, um, I, I think the, 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 the position here that uh, it's kind of like doing extended military training with live ammunition, um, in, in, in which in the war games, people are gonna get killed at comparable rates as they would when they actually land on the beach. Um, that, that this is questionable. That uh, rather, if we want to minimize the total risk to life and health of the astronaut crews, uh, the philosophy needs to be, well, clearly to not gratuitously expose people to zero gravity, but to as rapidly as possible implement the engineering solution that eliminates the condition. And as far as uh, radiation effects are concerned, uh, once again, to get and, and, and do the mission directly because we're I imposing the same degree of, of health impeachment by waiting as we would in actually flying. So those are my remarks. Uh, I'll leave it there and I'll open it up. Uh, hey, Bob, uh, excuse me, if anyone is leaving on the tour to Carolyn Park, they should start leaving now. We've got about four minutes to get to the Okay. All right. So questions, comments? Sir? Yeah. If we had done the space station right, so it would be a rotating in space station to do gravity, we actually could have, I mean, we had launched to do the space station at the end. Uh, we could have still done zero gravity experiments by having a module in the middle, what that is. Well, uh, perhaps. And, and then people could have gone there. And in fact, we yeah. have graduated so, uh, uh, the, the whole thing. So uh, along the way, we have they say one-third gravity, so we could actually study the effect on organism 
uh, under the gravity of Mars. So that would have been a much more useful thing to do while not exposing the astronauts and this is ahead. I agree. Other comments? You got one comment? Sir. Um, one of the plans to use the space station was called a uh, centrifuge accommodation module, where they were going to do um, uh, centrifuge experiments on smaller, smaller animals. But that was one of the first things cut when they redesigned the space station and got, got rid of all the utilization funding uh, for using it. So they wanted to do uh, at least small scale um, um, centrifuge experiments. I don't know if the Europeans are developing a small scale centrifuge. I think I read somewhere that they're, they're thinking about putting a small scale centrifuge on there. And what about a uh, low radius uh, experiment? I think Larry DeYoung or somebody are, are using small radius experiments. Right, well, you're spinning people. But basically, though, people can't function in such small radius conditions. They could sleep in them, maybe, which would be useful. But, the, you know, the criticism that we can't implement artificial gravity on a spacecraft, which involves rotating a spacecraft either as a single rigid spacecraft, you know, t 20 meter diameter on a rigid boom or, uh, you know, a kilometer diameter on a tether uh, at a lower RPM, um, yeah, there's certain technical issues to be resolved there, but the control of a two-body object is trivial compared to trying to alter human physiology. Okay, so in other words, I view the thing very comparable to this issue of the hypoxia, where yeah, there's certain technical issues associated with an oxygen mask system on an airplane, uh, but they don't compare to trying to change people to use less oxygen. Uh, in their physiology. And, and similarly, to try to change human physiology with various drugs and so forth to counter the effects of zero gravity when we have lived in a gravity environment for the past 400 million years since we left the ocean. Uh, I, I, to compare, uh, you know, the, to, to hold up the difficulties of implementing a, a two-body rotation engineering solution compared to changing human physiology, I, I think is absurd. Sir? Um, this question is regards to radiation causing rays. I've read that you can naturally you can shield radiation with lead. I've also heard you can shield some forms of radiation with a barrier of water somewhere between 5 to 12 inches. Is that a feasible thing to stop radiation that you get out there, or will that not stop cosmic rays as well? It, the amount of mass that we can travel with will not stop cosmic rays. It will stop solar flares, okay, and that's important. Uh, if you're traveling to Mars, you have enough provisions on the ship, food, water, and wastes, that uh, they, if they're positioned well around a small central region of the ship, you have enough mass there to, to block out cosmic, uh, excuse me, solar flares. Because the solar flare particles only have energies of a few million volts each, and they can be stopped by five inches of water. But cosmic ray particles, have energies of a billion volts each, three orders of magnitude higher. So they'll rip through five inches of water. You need more like five meters of water to effectively shield against that. And you just don't have the mass. Uh, so, but the, the good news is, is unlike the solar flares, which are capable of dealing a prompt dose, that is a dose that punch, you know, hits you fast enough to cause radiation sickness or death, uh, here you're dealing with just a pitter patter of radiation that creates a probabilistic a dose, okay, um, but 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 those probabilistic doses are entirely comparable to that which we're getting on the space station. Okay. If we need uh, more liquid, why don't we just uh, the barrier of the actual liquid fuel for the ship itself surround the actual crew compartment? Well, to some extent, you can do that. Um, it, it, with a well-designed ship, and if you have a, a, a lot of propellant, you can probably shield off one direction, so you can reduce the amount of, of, of cosmic rays you get from I, 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 at least one, one major direction. So there is an element of, of design freedom that you have here to, to assist. Uh, but it, it is the case that uh, in, in pretty much any credible design, you're, you're going to get a cosmic ray dose in transit to Mars. And what um, direction would you actually want the most shielding at? Doesn't really matter. Just any? It, it, yeah, it doesn't matter, uh, sir. Um, when I think of a rotating body, I immediately think of conservation of angular momentum. 
and some of the problems that they had 